Greenlandic Kalalasut is an Eskimo Aleut language spoken by about 56,000 Greenlandic Inuit in Greenland. It is closely related to the Inuit languages in Canada such as Inuktitut. The main variety, Kalalasut or West Greenlandic, has been the official language of the Greenlandic Autonomous Territory since June 2009. This is a move by the Nalakarsasut government of Greenland to strengthen the language in its competition with the colonial language, Danish. The second variety is Tunumiat Oraziat or East Greenlandic. The Thule Inuit of Greenland, Inuktun or Polar Eskimo, is a recent arrival and a dialect of Inuktitut. Greenlandic is a polysynthetic language that allows the creation of long words by stringing together roots and suffixes. Its morphosyntactic alignment is ergative, meaning that it treats i.e. case marks the argument subject of an intransitive verb like the object of a transitive verb, but distinctly from the agent subject of a transitive verb. Nouns are inflected for one of the eight cases and for possession. Verbs are inflected for one of the eight moods and for the number and person of its subject and object. Both nouns and verbs have complex derivational morphology. Basic word order in transitive clauses is subject-object-verb. Subordination of clauses is done by the use of special subordinate moods. A so-called fourth-person category enables switch reference between main clauses and subordinate clauses with different subjects. Greenlandic is notable for its lack of a system of grammatical tense, as temporal relations are normally expressed through context, through the use of temporal particles such as yesterday, or now, or sometimes through the use of derivational suffixes or the combination of affixes with aspectual meanings with the semantic actions art of different verbs. However, some linguists have suggested that Greenlandic does mark future tense obligatorily. Another question is whether the language has noun incorporation, or whether the processes that create complex predicates that include nominal roots are derivational in nature. When adopting new concepts or technologies, Greenlandic usually constructs new words made from Greenlandic roots, but modern Greenlandic has also taken many loans from Danish and English. The language has been written in the Latin script since Danish colonization began in the 1700s. The first orthography was developed by Samuel Kleinsmith in 1851, but within a hundred years already differed substantially from the spoken language because of a number of sound changes. An extensive orthographic reform undertaken in 1973 that made the script easier to learn resulted in a boost in Greenlandic literacy, which is now among the highest in the world. Topic. History The Greenlandic language was brought to Greenland with the arrival of the Thule people in the 1200s. It is unknown which languages were spoken by the earlier Sakak and Dorset cultures in Greenland. The first descriptions of Greenlandic date from the 1600s, and with the arrival of Danish missionaries in the early 1700s, and the beginning of Danish colonialism in Greenland, the compilation of dictionaries and description of grammar began. The missionary Paul Egede wrote the first Greenlandic dictionary in 1750, and the first grammar in 1760. From the Danish colonization in the 1700s to the beginning of Greenlandic home rule in 1979, Greenlandic experienced increasing pressure from the Danish language. In the 1950s, Denmark's linguistic policies were directed at strengthening Danish. Of primary significance was that post primary education and official functions were conducted in Danish. From 1851 to 1973, Greenlandic was written in a complicated orthography devised by the missionary linguist Samuel Kleinsmith. 
In 1973, a new orthography was introduced, intended to bring the written language closer to the spoken standard, which had changed considerably since Kleinsmith's time. The reform was effective and in the years following it, Greenlandic literacy received a boost. Another development that strengthened the Greenlandic language has been the policy of Greenlandization of Greenlandic society which began with the Home Rule Agreement of 1979. This policy has worked to reverse the former trend towards marginalization of the Greenlandic language by making it the official language of education. The fact that Greenlandic has become the only language used in primary schooling has meant that today monolingual Danish-speaking parents in Greenland are raising children bilingual in Danish and Greenlandic. Today Greenlandic has several dedicated news media, the Greenlandic National Radio, Kalalit Nunata Radio, which provides television and radio programming in Greenlandic. The newspaper Sir Mitsiak, has been published since 1958, and in 2010 merged with the other newspaper Atwagajluti, Gronlandsposten, which was established already in 1861 to form a single large Greenlandic language publishing house. Before June 2009, Greenlandic shared its status as the official language in Greenland with Danish. Since then, Greenlandic has become the sole official language. This has made Greenlandic a unique example of an indigenous language of the Americas that is recognized by law as the only official language of a semi-independent country. Nevertheless, it is still considered to be in a «vulnerable» state by the UNESCO Red Book of Language Endangerment. The country has a 100% literacy rate. As the Western Greenlandic standard has become dominant, a UNESCO report has labeled the other dialects as endangered, and measures are now being considered to protect the Eastern Greenlandic dialect. Topic: Classification. Kalalasut and the other Greenlandic dialects belong to the Eskimo Aleut family and are closely related to the Inuit languages of Canada and Alaska. Illustration 1 shows the locations of the different Eskimoan languages, among them the three main dialects of Greenlandic. The most prominent Greenlandic dialect is West Greenlandic, Kalalasut, which is the official language of Greenland. The name Kalalasud is often used as a cover term for all of Greenlandic. The northern dialect, Inuktun, spoken in the vicinity of the city of Kanak Tuli, is particularly closely related to Canadian Inuktitut. The eastern dialect, Tunumiat Oraziat, spoken in the vicinity of Amasalik Island and Itokortormit, is the most innovative of the Greenlandic dialects, having assimilated consonant clusters and vowel sequences to a greater extent than West Greenlandic. Kalalasut is further divided into four subdialects. One that is spoken around Upernavik has certain similarities to East Greenlandic, possibly because of a previous migration from Eastern Greenland. A second dialect is spoken in the region of Umanok and the Disco Bay. The standard language is based on the central Kalalasut dialect spoken in Sisimiat in the north, around Nuuk and as far south as Manitsoq. Southern Kalalasud is spoken around Narsak and Kakortok in the south. Table 1 shows the differences in the pronunciation of the word for humans in the three main dialects. It can be seen that Inuktun is the most conservative, maintaining the gh, which has been elided in Kalalasut, and Tunumisut is the most innovative, having further simplified the structure by eliding the n. Topic. Phonology Letters between slashes, indicate phonemic transcription, letters in square brackets indicate phonetic transcription and letters in triangular brackets indicate standard Greenlandic orthography.
Topic: Vowels. The Greenlandic three-vowel system, composed of i, u, and a, is typical for an Eskimo Aleut language. Double vowels are analyzed as two more, so they are phonologically a vowel sequence and not a long vowel. They are also written as two vowels in the orthography. The only diphthong in the language is i, which occurs only at the ends of words. Before a uvular consonant, q or I is realized allophonically as e or and u is realized allophonically as o or and the two vowels are written e o respectively as in some orthographies used for Quechua and Aymara. A becomes retracted to in the same environment. I is rounded to y before labial consonants. U is fronted to between two coronal consonants, the allophonic lowering of i and u before uvular consonants is shown in the modern orthography by writing i and u as e and o respectively before uvulars q and r. For example, ui husband pronounced ui uikarpuk she has a husband pronounced uikpq and written uikarpuk ilu. House, pronounced I U. Alugarpuk, he has a house, pronounced I O Q P Q, and written Ilakarpuk. Topic: Consonants. Greenlandic has consonants at five points of articulation: labial, alveolar, palatal, velar, and uvular. It does not have phonemic voicing contrast, but rather distinguishes stops from fricatives. It distinguishes stops, fricatives, and nasals at the labial, alveolar, velar, and uvular points of articulation. The earlier palatal sibilant has merged with s in all but a few dialects. The labiodental fricative f is only contrastive in loanwords. The alveolar stop t is pronounced as an affricate t s before the high front vowel i. Often, Danish loanwords containing b d g preserve these in writing, although this does not imply a change in pronunciation. For example, baja pa ya beer and guti kuti god. These are pronounced exactly as p t k. Topic. Phonotactics The Kalalasut syllable is simple, allowing syllables of C, V, V, C, where C is a consonant and V is a vowel and VV is a double vowel or word final, I. Native words may only begin with a vowel or p, t, k, q, s, m, n, they may end only in p, t, k, q, or rarely, n. Consonant clusters only occur over syllable boundaries and their pronunciation is subject to regressive assimilations that convert them into geminates. All non-nasal consonants in a cluster are voiceless. Topic. Prosody Greenlandic prosody does not include stress as an autonomous category, instead, prosody is determined by tonal and durational parameters. Intonation is influenced by syllable weight, heavy syllables are pronounced in a way that may be perceived as stress. Heavy syllables include syllables with long vowels and syllables before consonant clusters. The last syllable is stressed in words with fewer than four syllables and without long vowels or consonant clusters. The antepenultimate syllable is stressed in words with more than four syllables that are all light. 
In words with many heavy syllables, syllables with long vowels are considered heavier than syllables before a consonant cluster. Geminate consonants are pronounced long, almost exactly with the double duration of a single consonant. Intonation in indicative clauses usually rises on the antepenultimate syllable, falls on the penult, and rises on the last syllable. Interrogative intonation rises on the penultimate and falls on the last syllable. Topic. Morphophonology Greenlandic phonology distinguishes itself phonologically from the other Inuit languages by a series of assimilations. Greenlandic phonology allows clusters, but it does not allow clusters of two different consonants unless the first one is in all other cases the first consonant in a cluster is assimilated to the second one resulting in a geminate consonant. Geminate t, t is pronounced t -s and written ts. Geminate l, l is pronounced. Geminate is pronounced c cedilla, but is written g g. Geminate is pronounced chi. Geminate v v is pronounced f and written f f. V is also pronounced and written F after. These assimilations mean that one of the most recognizable Inuktitut words, iglu, house, is ilu in Greenlandic, where the l consonant cluster of Inuktitut is assimilated into a voiceless alveolar lateral fricative. And the word Inuktitut itself, when translated into Kalalasut, becomes Inatut. The Old Greenlandic diphthong, o, has assimilated to, a. The consonant, v, has disappeared when between, u, and, i, or, a. This means that affixes beginning with v a or v have forms without, v, when suffixed to stems ending in, u. The vowel, i, of modern Greenlandic is the result of a historic merger of the Proto-Eskimo Aleut vowels asterisk i and asterisk. The fourth vowel was still present in Old Greenlandic as attested by Hans Egede. In modern West Greenlandic the difference between the two original vowels can only be discerned morphophonologically in certain environments. The vowel that was originally asterisk has the variant of when preceding another vowel and sometimes disappears before certain suffixes. The degree to which the assimilation of consonant clusters has taken place is an important dialectal feature separating Polar Eskimo, Inuktum, which still allows some ungeminated consonant clusters, from West and East Greenlandic. East Greenlandic Orasiat, has shifted some geminate consonants, e.g., to t. Thus, for example, the East Greenlandic name of a particular town is Itokortormit, which would appear as Ilokortormit in Kalalasut. <laughs> Grammar The morphology of Greenlandic is highly synthetic and exclusively suffixing, with the exception of a single highly limited and fossilized demonstrative prefix. It creates very long words by means of adding strings of suffixes to a stem. In principle there is no limit to the length of a Greenlandic word, but in practice words with more than half a dozen derivational suffixes are not so frequent, and the average number of morphemes per word is 3 to 5. The language employs around 318 inflectional suffixes and between 400 and 500 derivational ones. There are few compound words, but lots of derivations. The grammar employs a mixture of head and dependent marking, both agent and patient are marked on the predicate and the possessor is marked on nouns, while dependent noun phrases inflect for case. The primary morphosyntactic alignment of full noun phrases in Kalalasud is ergative-absolutive, although verbal morphology follows a nominative-accusative pattern and pronouns are syntactically neutral. 
the language distinguishes four persons first, second, third and fourth or third reflexive see obviation and switch reference, two numbers singular and plural, no dual as in anuktatut, eight moods indicative, interrogative, imperative, optative, conditional, causative, contemplative and participial and eight cases absolutive, ergative, equative, instrumental, locative, allative, ablative and prolative. Verbs carry a bipersonal inflection for subject and object. Possessive noun phrases inflect for their possessor, as well as for case. In this section, the examples are written in Greenlandic standard orthography, except that morpheme boundaries are indicated by a hyphen. Topic: Syntax. Greenlandic distinguishes three open word classes, nouns, verbs and particles. Verbs inflect for person and number of subject and object as well as for mood. Nouns inflect for possession and for case. Particles do not inflect. The verb is the only word required to build a sentence. Since verbs inflect for number and person of both subject and object, the verb is in fact a clause itself. Therefore, clauses where all participants are expressed as freestanding noun phrases are rather rare. The following examples show the possibilities of leaving out these verbal arguments. Intransitive clause with no subject noun phrase. Sini ppoq. S. He sleeps. Sleep 3p. Indintransitive clause with subject noun phrase. Angat sinipak. The man sleeps. Man, abs sleep 3p. Intransitive clause with no overt arguments. Asa vaa. S. He loves him, her, it. Love 3p. 3p. Transitive clause with agent noun phrase. Angat ip asa vaa. The man loves him, her, it. Man erg love 3p, 3p transitive clause with patient noun phrase. Arnak asa vaa. S. He loves the woman. Woman. Abs love 3p, 3p. Topic. Morphosyntactic alignment. The Greenlandic language uses case to express grammatical relations between participants in a sentence. Nouns are inflected with one of the two core cases or one of the six oblique cases. Greenlandic is an ergative language. This means that, instead of treating the grammatical relations as in most European languages where grammatical subjects are marked with nominative case and objects with accusative, the grammatical roles are defined differently. In Greenlandic the ergative case is used for agents of transitive verbs and for possessors. Absolutive case is used for patients of transitive verbs and subjects of intransitive verbs. Research into Greenlandic as used by the younger generation has shown that the use of ergative alignment in Kalalasut may be becoming obsolete, converting the language into a nominative accusative language, intransitive. Anda sini ppoq. Anda sleeps. Anda, abs sleep 3p, intransitive with agent and object. Anda p nanak taku a. Anda sees a bear. And a erg bear abs c three p three p. Topic word order. In transitive clauses where both object and subject are expressed as free noun phrases, basic, pragmatically neutral word order is AOXV, SXV, where X is a noun phrase in one of the oblique cases. This order is fairly free, though. Topical noun phrases occur at the beginning of a clause whereas new or emphasized information generally come last. This is usually the verb, but it can also be a focal subject or object as well. In spoken language also, afterthought 
material or clarifications may follow the verb, usually in a lowered pitch. On the other hand, the noun phrase is characterized by a rigid order where the head of the phrase precedes any modifiers and the possessor precedes the possessum. In copula clauses, the order is usually subject copula complement. Andap tujulik pijara. Anda bought the sweater. And a sweater bought. A O van attribute appears after its head noun. Andap tujulik tungujortak pijara. Anda bought the blue sweater. And a sweater blue bought. A O X van attribute of an incorporated noun appears after the verb. And a sanasuvak pikarisak. And a is a skilled carpenter. And a carpenter is skilled. SV app. Topic: Coordination and subordination. Syntactic coordination and subordination is done by combining predicates in the superordinate moods indicative, interrogative, imperative, optative with predicates in the subordinate moods conditional, causative, contemporative and participial. The contemporative has both coordinative and subordinative functions depending on context. The relative order of the main clause and its coordinate or subordinate clauses is relatively free, and mostly subject to pragmatic concerns. Topic. Obviation and switch reference The Greenlandic pronominal system includes a distinction known as obviation or switch reference. There is a special so-called fourth person used to denote a third person subject of a subordinate verb or the possessor of a noun that is co-referent with the third person subject of the matrix clause. Below are examples of the difference between third and fourth person. Iluataku a. He saw his the other man's house. House 3 pa c 3 p 3 pilu ni taku a. He saw his own house. House 4 pa c 3 p 3 pol okar pok tilu kkiga. Ol said I had hit him, the other man. Ol say 3 p hit I, 3 pol okar pok tilu k kini. Ol said I had hit him, Ol. Ol say 3 p hit I, 4 piva iser uni sini ssaaq. When Eva comes in she'll sleep. Eva come dot in dash 4 p sleep expect 3 piva iser pat sini ssaaq when Eva comes in s he'll sleep someone else. Eva come. In 3 p sleep expect 3 p. Topic. Indefiniteness construction There is no category of definiteness in Greenlandic, so the information whether participants are already known to the listener or new in the discourse is encoded by other means. According to some authors, morphology related to transitivity such as the use of the construction sometimes called antipassive or intransitive object conveys such meaning, along with strategies of noun incorporation of non-topical noun phrases. This view, however, is controversial. Active Piitap arfeq takua. Peter saw the whale. Peter Erg Whale C antipassive, intransitive object. Petok Arfermik Tukuvak. Peter saw a whale. Peter Abs Whale INSTRC. Topic. Verbs. The morphology of Greenlandic verbs is enormously complex. The two main processes are inflection and derivation. Inflectional morphology includes the processes of obligatory inflection for mood, person, and voice tense, aspect is not an inflectional category in Kalalasut. 
Derivational morphology modifies the meaning of verbs in a way similar to that expressed by adverbs in English. Derivational suffixes of this kind number in the hundreds. Many of these suffixes are so semantically salient that they are often referred to as postbases rather than suffixes, particularly in the American tradition of Eskimo grammar. Such semantically heavy suffixes may express concepts such as to have, to be, to say, or to think. The Greenlandic verb word consists of a root plus derivational suffixes, postbases plus inflectional suffixes. Tense and aspect is marked by optional suffixes that appear between the derivational and inflectional suffixes. Topic: Inflection. Greenlandic verbs inflect for agreement with agent and patient, for mood and for voice. There are eight moods, of which four are used in independent clauses and four in subordinate clauses. The four independent moods are, indicative, interrogative, imperative, optative. The four dependent moods are causative, conditional, contemporative, and participial. Verbal roots can take transitive, intransitive or negative inflections, so that all eight mood suffixes have these three forms. The inflectional system is further complicated by the fact that transitive suffixes encode both agent and patient in a single morpheme, requiring up to 48 different suffixes to cover all possible combinations of agent and patient for each of the eight transitive paradigms. As some moods do not have forms for all persons imperative only has second person, optative only first and third person, participial mood has no fourth person and contemplative has no third person, the total number of verbal inflectional suffixes is about 318. Topic. Indicative and interrogative moods the indicative mood is used in all independent expository clauses. The interrogative mood is used for posing questions. Questions with the question particle imica, maybe, cannot use the interrogative mood. Naparsama vit. Are you sick? Interrogative mood. B. Sick dash you slash internomic, naparsama nn hila na. No, I am not sick. Indicative mood. No, be dot sick dash neg dash i slash in table five shows the intransitive indicative inflection for patient person and number of the verb nary to eat. In the indicative and interrogative moods, question marks mark interrogative intonation. Questions have falling intonation on the last syllable as opposed to most Indo-European languages in which questions are marked by rising intonation. The indicative and the interrogative mood each have a transitive and an intransitive inflection, but here only the intransitive inflection is given. Consonant gradation like that in Finnish appears to show up in the verb conjugation with strengthening to pp in the third person plural and weakening to v elsewhere. Table 6 shows the transitive indicative inflection for patient person and number of the verb asa, to love. An asterisk means that this form does not occur as such but would have to use a different reflexive inflection. Topic. Imperative and optative moods The imperative mood is used to issue orders. It is always combined with the second person. The optative is used to express wishes or exhortations and is never used with the second person. There is a negative imperative form used to issue prohibitions. Both optative and imperative have transitive and intransitive paradigms. There are two transitive positive imperative paradigms, a standard one, and one that is considered rude and is usually used to address children. Sini get. Sleep. 
Sleep Impsini Langa, Let Me Sleep. Sleep 1P, Opsini Nnak, Don't Sleep. Sleep Neg, Imp. Topic. Conditional mood The conditional mood is used to construct subordinate clauses with the meaning if or when. Sakinar pat Eva ani ssaaq. If the sun shines, Eva will go out. Sunshine cond Eva go. Out expect 3p. Topic. Causative mood The causative mood sometimes called the conjunctive is used to construct subordinate clauses with the meaning because, since, or when. It is also sometimes used with the meaning of that. The causative is also used in main clauses to imply some underlying cause. Qasu gami inner poq. He went to bed because he was tired. B tired cal 3 pgo dot to dot bed dash 3 pmata dash tur dash ama. I've eaten blubber, that's why I'm not hungry. Blubber eat cow, yani git ikama ssa vat terianya qar mat. If you go out, remember that there are foxes. Go. Out conned, you remember foot imp fox or cause. Topic. Contemplative mood The contemplative mood is used to construct subordinate clauses with the meaning of simultaneity. It is only used if the subject of the subordinate clause and of the main clause are identical. If they differ, the participial mood or causative mood are used. The contemplative can also be used to form complement clauses for verbs of speaking or thinking. Qasu lunga angerler punga. Being tired, I went home. B. Tired cont, I go, home I 98 inik ukioqar luni tokyu voq. Being 98 years old, he, she died. He, she was 98 when he, she died. 98INSTR, place year have CONT, 4P, SG die 3 Piva Okar POQ Kami it Akiler Lugat. Eva said she had paid for the boots. Eva say 3P boot place pay CONT, 3P. Place. Topic: Participial mood. The participial mood is used to construct a subordinate clause describing its subject in the state of carrying out an activity. It is used when the matrix clause and the subordinate clause have different subjects. It is often used in appositional phrases such as relative clauses. Atur tok taku era. I saw her read, I saw that she read. Read part 3 pci 3 nyuru p punga tiki ssasok. I hope he is coming, I hope he'll come. Hope I come expect part 3 p. Topic. Derivation Verbal derivation is extremely productive, and Greenlandic employs many hundreds of derivational suffixes. Often a single verb will use more than one derivational suffix, resulting in very long words. Below are given some examples of how derivational suffixes can change the meaning of verbs. Katap be tired of Taku katap para I am tired of seeing it him her See tired of I 3 p lur begin to be about to Neri lur pugut we are about to eat 
Eat begin we Yakup. Be proficient at. Erin R. Su Yakup P. O. Q. She is good at singing. Sing hab proficiently 3 PNIAR. Plans to, wants to. Aller NIAR POQ. He plans to travel. Travel plan 3 Pangerler NIAR Alwar Punga. I was planning to go home though. Go, home plan though I Najap. Almost. Sini Najap Punga. I had almost fallen asleep. Sleep almost I Niku NN Hila. Has never. Taku Niku NN Hila Ra. I have never seen it. See never neg I 3 P Ning at Sor. Not anyway, after all. Tiki Ning at Sor P O Q. He hasn't arrived after all. Arrive not. After all 3 P. Topic. Time reference and aspect Greenlandic grammar has morphological devices to mark a distinction between, for example, recent and distant past, but the use of these is not obligatory, and they should therefore rather be understood as parts of Greenlandic's extensive derivational system than as a system of tense markers. Rather than by morphological marking, fixed temporal distance is expressed by temporal adverbials. Toko Rikatap POQ. He died long ago. Die dash long dot ago dash 3p slash ein. Nair Kamer Punga. I ate recently. Eat recently I, ein. Apasak Pitak Arpap POQ. Yesterday Peter was running. Yesterday Peter Abs run 3p, indel other things being equal and in the absence of any explicit adverbials, the indicative mood will be interpreted as complete or incomplete depending on the verbal actions art. Petok Arpap POQ. Peter runs. Peter Abs run 3p, ein. Petok Ani VOQ. Peter was gone out. Peter abs go dot out 3 p, in but if a sentence containing an italic verbal phrase is embedded within the context of a past time narrative, it would be interpreted as past. Greenlandic has several purely derivational devices of expressing meaning related to aspect and actions art, e.g. SAR expressing habituality and SSAAR expressing stop to. Next to these, there are at least two major perfect markers, Sima and Niku. Sima can occur in several positions with obviously different function rightmost position indicates evidential meaning, but this can be determined only if a number of suffixes are present. Tiki t Niku Sima voq. Apparently, she had arrived. Arrive in Ikuu Sima 3p, int with italic verbs, there is a regular contrast between indirective evidentiality marked by Sima and witnessed evidentiality marked by Niku. Due to its evidential meaning, the combination of first person and Sima sometimes is marked. Qia Sima voq. He cried, his eyes are swollen. Cry Sima 3P, Ein Qia Niku Voq. He cried, I was there. Cry Nikuu 3P, and in the written language and more recently also in the spoken language, especially of younger speakers, Sima and Niku can be used together with adverbials referring to a particular time in the past. That is, they might arguably mark time reference, but not yet systematically. Just as Greenlandic does not systematically mark past tense, the language also does not have a future tense. Rather, it employs three different strategies to express future meaning. Suffixes denoting cognitive states that show an attitude about prospective actions e.g. 
Ilamaga era AASAQ Mana Dudley Kujaner Tor CFFIGISSA Lugu. I expect to get some fun out of Dudley this summer. Expect I 3 p. Ein summer this Dudley be. Fun cn get. From expect contemplative slash three pinchoative suffixes creating telic actions which can then be understood as already having begun by virtue of the indicative mood, e.g. Adjuti ler para. I've started to bring him. Bring begin I, 3 p, endmoods that mark the speech act as a request or wish e.g. Kimi t nirakar niar nijik. Let us feed the dogs, okay. Dog plays feed please we, them, impwile the status of the perfect markers as aspect is not very controversial. Some scholars have claimed that Greenlandic has a basic temporal distinction between future and non-future. Especially, the suffix ssa and handful of other suffixes have been claimed to be obligatory future markers. However, at least for literary Greenlandic, these suffixes have been shown to have other semantics that can be used to refer to the future via the strategies just described. Topic: Noun incorporation. There is also a debate in the linguistic literature whether Greenlandic has noun incorporation. This is because Greenlandic does not allow the kind of incorporation common in many languages in which a noun root can be incorporated into almost any verb to form a verb with a new meaning. On the other hand, Greenlandic does often form verbs that include noun roots. The question then becomes whether to analyze these verb formations as incorporation or as denominal derivation of verbs. Greenlandic has a number of morphemes that require a noun root as their host and which form complex predicates that correspond closely in meaning to what is often seen in languages that have canonical noun incorporation. Linguists who propose that Greenlandic does have incorporation argue that these morphemes are in fact verbal roots that must obligatorily incorporate nouns to form grammatical clauses. This argument is supported by the fact that many of the derivational morphemes that form denominal verbs work almost identically to canonical noun incorporation. They allow the formation of words with a semantic content corresponding to an entire English clause with verb, subject and object. Another argument is that the morphemes used to derive denominal verbs come from historical noun incorporating constructions that have become fossilized. Other linguists maintain that the morphemes in question are simply derivational morphemes that allow the formation of denominal verbs. This argument is supported by the fact that the morphemes cannot occur without being latched into a nominal element. The examples below illustrate how Greenlandic forms complex predicates including nominal roots. Q-I-M-M-E-Q. -M -M -E dog. Plus Q-A-R. Have. Plus P-O-Q. 3-P. Q I M M E Q A R P O Q. She has a dog. Ilu. House. Plus Lior. Make. Ilu Lior P O Q. She builds a house. Coffee. Coffee. Plus Sor. Drink, eat. Coffee Sor P O Q. She drinks coffee. Pussy. Seal. Plus N N I A R Hunt Pussy N N I A R P O Q She hunts seal Allagak Letter Plus C Receive Allagar C V O Q She has received a letter Anaana Mother Plus a To be Anaana of V O Q She is a mother Topic. Nouns 
nouns are obligatorily inflected for case and number and optionally for number and person of possessor. Singular and plural are distinguished and eight cases used, absolutive, ergative, relative, instrumental, allative, locative, ablative, prosecutive also called vialis or prolative, and equative. Case and number are marked by a single suffix. Nouns can be derived from verbs or from other nouns by a number of suffixes, e.g. atuar, to read, plus fic, place, becomes atuarfic, school, and atuarfic plus sialac, something good, becomes atuarfit sialac, good school. The fact that the possessive agreement suffixes on nouns and the transitive agreement suffixes on verbs in a number of instances have similar or identical shapes has even resulted in the theory that Greenlandic has a distinction between transitive and intransitive nouns, parallel to the same distinction in the verbs. Topic. Pronouns. There are personal pronouns for first, second, and third person singular and plural. These pronouns are optional as subjects or objects, but only when the verbal inflection refers to such arguments. Personal pronouns are, however, necessary in the oblique case. Alin nut niri ku a. Thou all, eat tell to threes minus threes indic. He told you to eat it. Topic. Case The two grammatical core cases ergative and absolutive are used to express grammatical and syntactical roles of participant noun phrases. The oblique cases express information related to movement and manner. A N G U T Nary V O Q. The man eats. Man abs eat three pangu tip pussy nary V A A. The man eats the seal. Man erg seal abs eat three p three p t h e instrumental case is versatile. It is used for the instrument with which an action is carried out, for oblique objects of intransitive verbs also called antipassive verbs and for secondary objects of transitive verbs. Nano Q Savum M I Nick Copy V A A. He stabbed the bear with his knife. Polar bear abs knife his dot own i n s t r stab 3 p 3 p cafimic tor tar p o q. She usually drinks coffee. Coffee instr drink usually three patak savam mik tuni vara. I gave Peter a knife. Peter abs knife instr give I three pit is also used to express the meaning of give me and for forming adverbs from nouns. I m e r mik give me water. Water instrusivasu mik sinap pok. He slept late. Late instr sleep 3 pthe allative case describes movement towards something. Ilu mut. Towards the house. It is also used with numerals and the question word kasit to express the time of the clock, and in the meaning, amount per unit. Kasi nut. Pingasu nut. When. At three o'clock. When all three alkilu mut tivi krona qarpoq. It costs 20 crowns per kilo. Kilo all 20 crown have three pthe locative case describes spatial location. Ilu mi. In the house. The ablative case describes movement away from something or the source of something. Rasmusi mit alagarsi voq. He got a letter from Rasmus. Rasmus abl receive, letter 3 tutu mit nasik. Antler horn from a reindeer. 
Rain. Deer. Abel Horn. The prosecutive case describes movement through something as well as the medium of writing or a location on the body. It is also used to describe a group of people such as a family as belonging to the modified noun. Matu Kkutizer Poq. He entered through the door. Door pros enter three PSUKKUT till up pot it? Where on the body did he hit you? Where pros hit three P Upalasi KKUT the priest and his family. Priest pros the quative case describes similarity of manner or quality. It is also used for deriving language names from nouns denoting nationalities, i.e., like a person of X nationality speaks. Nakorsitut Suli Sar Poq. He works as a doctor. Dr. E. Q. U. Work Hab 3 Pikaluna Tut. Danish language like a Dane. Dane E. Q. U. Topic. Possession In Greenlandic possession is marked on the noun which agrees with the person and number of its possessor. The possessor is in the ergative case. There are different possessive paradigms for all of the different cases. Table 4 gives the possessive paradigm for the absolutive case of ilu house. Below are given examples of the use of the possessive inflection, the use of the ergative case for possessors and the use of fourth-person possessors. Anda p ilua. Anda's house. Anda erg house 3p. Posanda p ilu ni taku a. Anda sees his own house. Anda erg house 4p, pos c 3p, 3 panda p ilu a taku a. Anda sees his the other man's house. Anda erg house 3p, pos c 3p, 3p. Topic: Vocabulary. Greenlandic vocabulary is mostly inherited from Proto-Eskimo Aleut, but it has also taken a large number of loans from other languages, especially from Danish. Early loans from Danish have often become acculturated to the Greenlandic phonological system, for example the Greenlandic word palasi priest, is a loan from the Danish praest. But since Greenlandic has an enormous potential for the derivation of new words from existing roots, many modern concepts have Greenlandic names that have been invented rather than borrowed, e.g. Karasaziak, computer, which literally means artificial brain. This potential for complex derivations also means that Greenlandic vocabulary is built on very few roots which combined with affixes come to form large word families. For example the root for tongue, OQAQ is used to derive the following words Okarpak says Okasik word Okalupak speaks Okasilarisak linguist. Okazilarisuti grammar. Okaluchalayortak author. Okasapilupa harangues him. Okwelokatiginik conversation. Okadijinerlupa speaks badly about him. Lexical differences between dialects are often considerable. This is due to the earlier cultural practice of imposing taboo on words which had served as names for a deceased person. Since people were often named after everyday objects, many of these have changed their name several times because of taboo rules, causing dialectal vocabulary to diverge further. Topic: Orthography Greenlandic is written with the Latin script. The alphabet 
AEFGHIJKLMNOPQRSTUVTO spell loanwords from other languages, especially from Danish and English. The additional letters B, C, D, X, Y, Z, W, A, O, and A are used. Greenlandic uses the symbols and as quotation marks. From 1851 until 1973, Greenlandic was written in the alphabet invented by Samuel Kleinsmith. This alphabet employed the special character Kra Kappa, which was replaced by Q in the 1973 reform. In the Kleinsmith alphabet, long vowels and geminate consonants were indicated by means of diacritics on the vowels in the case of consonant gemination, the diacritics were placed on the vowel preceding the affected consonant. For example, the name Kalalit Nunat was spelled Kalatlet Nunat. This scheme uses a circumflex accent to indicate a long vowel e.g., at, it, ut, modern, aat, iit, uut, an acute accent to indicate gemination of the following consonant, i.e., a, i, u modern, a, kk, i, kk, u, kk, and, finally, a tilde or a grave accent backquote, depending on the author, indicates vowel length and gemination of the following consonant consonant e.g., at, it, ut or at, it, ut, modern, aatt, iitt, uutt. The letters e and o, used only before r and q, are now written ee -e and u in Greenlandic. The spelling system of Nunachavumiutut, spoken in Nunachavit in northeastern Labrador, is derived from the old Greenlandic system. Technically, the Kleinsmith orthography focused upon morphology, the same derivational affix would be written in the same way in different contexts, despite its being pronounced differently in different contexts. The 1973 reform replaced this with a phonological system, here, there was a clear link from written form to pronunciation, and the same suffix is now written differently in different contexts. The differences are due to phonological changes. It is therefore easy to go from the old orthography to the new CF, the online converter, whereas going the other direction would require a full lexical analysis. Topic: <laughs> Sample text. Inuit Tamarmik Anungorput Namanir Zinasus Karludik Asigimalu Atakin Asasakarlatilu Pasinadatov Karludik. Salakasuzermik Tarnilu Nalungasujanik Pilarshugaput, Imanulu Ilir Figikatigiataria Karlwarput Katangatigiatut Pikatigianarup Anursavani. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Topic. See also Inuit languages Inuit grammar Inuit phonology equals equals notes